Hey everyone, this is D. Murthy here. You might know me from the number one podcast in the world, Group Chat. And today I am launching my new podcast, the number two podcast in the world. It's called Detour. It's going to be 10 minutes. And the idea here is to just share what's on my mind, talk about a lot of business-related stuff, finance stuff, um, staying away from the news because we do that in group chat, but really the conversations that I have every single day and all the interesting people I meet and the stuff that people always ask me. I want to answer it and I answer it to the largest audience possible. So I figure a 10-minute podcast twice a week is the best way to do it. Right now we're working on the name. It sounds like it's going to be Detour, so look out for that. But our first episode today is with Rohan Tucker. He is someone I met through our run club. Our run club, by the way, is the most incredible young people you'll ever meet in the world. So you have to come out to it if you're in LA. And he runs a company called Orca Financial. And he is what you call a financial educator. And I figure since the beginning of the year, it's time to focus on budgeting, saving, investing, and tax planning. These are so fundamental to our daily life. And we don't, we often overlook it. So this episode is dedicated to that. Please pay attention. No matter your age, it's always relevant. And let's make some money this year and let's save some money and let's pay our taxes on time, even though the government is shut down. Here we go. All right, Rohan. What's up, man? How are you? Happy New Year. Good, good. Happy New Year. What? How long do you say Happy New Year for? Um, until February 1st. February 1st? All right. Okay. Good to so know. You can stop then. <laughs> um, so, you know, the podcast is 10 minutes, so we're going to get rolling right away. I want to talk about planning financially for 2019. I historically, as an entrepreneur, have been a terrible planner. Okay. Um, partly because I don't have the patience or the time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the years that I made really good money, I invested extremely aggressively. Okay. And I, uh, in ended up investing aggressively into startups, Okay. which did very well for me. Mm -hmm. And that's a function of just my ability to access deals that other people were not able to get into. Yep. And then I also... I probably stayed away from more traditional stuff because mm -hmm. I just took advantage of my access. Yeah. But as you know, it's an illiquid market when you invest in startups mm -hmm. and it's years and years away. So because of that, historically, I just have not saved the cash that I wanted to. Now that I have a family, I'm kind of taking a step back. Yeah. I've stopped investing, mm -hmm. um, looking to save money, planning taxes a little bit better because yeah. now that's like... As the income increases, it's always challenging to figure those things out. Yep. And I'm actually in the middle of an audit, which is awesome, <laughs> which, fun, which I'm really excited yeah. about because the government shut down. Yeah. So that'll hopefully delay everything. <laughs> but what kind of advice do you give to, you know, everyone from a young person to an older person like myself that is like evergreen that we should be thinking about? Yeah. I mean, it, it's so simple. The first thing to really think about is to create that budget. Right, and it sounds so boring, and there's all these. Apps. How do I do that physically? Tell me how I create a budget. Super, super simple. Don't go get an app. Don't go do all this stuff. You can confuse yourself more. Right. Okay. Simply just go on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Type in exactly what you spend a month. Yeah. Just put it on there. That's it. That's it. Okay. Super, super. So simple. rent X. Yep. Mortgage X. Yep. Um, Everything X. Food, groceries, whatever. Yep. And then just put your net profit each month on the side. Right? Or net loss. Or net loss, whatever yeah. whatever's going on, <laughs> right? And then simply just take what your expenses are and how much you're making and see much, see how much money you have left over every month. Yeah. Right? It could be as little as $100. It could be as much as $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. That's your discretionary income. Wow. Once you start to know what your discretionary income is. Then, then you can know if you should be getting VIP passes for Coachella or regular passes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, or if you want to think about it even deeper, you should actually start thinking about how you can invest money the year before yeah. to pay for your Coachella tickets. Yes. Right? Got and it. that's the idea of financial freedom, right? To me, everything you think about in your life, not just, hey, should I be investing money for my retirement? It should be, hey, I want to go to Europe. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, I want to buy that car, right? Everything should be thought about from an investment perspective. So once you make your budget, then what do you do? So basically, when you make your budget, you get that discretionary income, like yeah. I said. And then you start to say, okay, hey, the general rule is 50, 30, 20. Okay, right? so what's that mean? So basically it means that you spend 50% of your, of your monthly income on living cost, mm -hmm. right? 30% you put in your savings account, and then 20% you put towards investments, be it startups, be it the market, be it real estate, whatever you could deem as your investments. And so I know that sounds great, mm -hmm. but like when you live in one of some of these big cities, yep. I... I don't remember a time where I could have made 50% work. Yeah. 
And that's 100% true. Most of the people that I've seen actually are more about 60, 70. Yeah. And it has changed, yes. right? The main goal of all this is to get your savings to that two and a half month worth of living cost, right? So your savings account should have two and a half month of mm -hmm. living cost. So that's all those expenses on your spreadsheet. Yep. If, you, if you have two and a half months, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. You know why? Because at the end of the day, the best advice I ever got was, do you trust yourself to make money? So if you trust yourself to make money, you're giving yourself a two and a half month time limit right there to actually do something with your life. So you're pretty much giving yourself 75 days if all hell breaks loose. Exactly. So you lose your job, you get fired, recession hits, you have 75 days to hustle. Exactly. The next gig. And if someone told you you had 75 days to you back in the day, what would you do? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be I would be a monster. I'd figure it out fast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so that, that's kind of that rule. And then once you're done with that, it could be 75% living costs, but then put 20, 25%, right, into the investments. And when I'm saying investments, I'm not saying just strictly just go into the stock market, right? Yeah. I'm saying, okay, cool. Maybe it's real estate. Maybe it's some startups. Start putting little nest eggs aside, mm -hmm. right? And then kind of dive into whatever you want to dive into. So investing is such a broad term. So what's like the run of the mill basic strategy for investing is probably the stock market, right? Yes and no. Because it, like you talk about a startup, if you're saving $100 a month, you're mm -hmm. not investing in a startup. You're not investing in a startup. No, that's 100% You don't even true. have the access to it, yeah. frankly. You don't. Um, and so that, that's essentially something called dripping money into the, the stock market, right? Uh, but basically, imagine Monopoly. Mm -hmm. When you play Monopoly, you don't go around and buy all the properties on your first turn. Yeah. Right? You go around and you probably buy Oriental Express if you got $100, right? Yeah. Or you, like, you buy a couple of things. You're not buying Park Place yet. Yeah, yeah. Right? No chance. <laughs> no chance. But you go around and then when you do the full complete turn, it's another month. And you can slowly start investing a little bit more too. So maybe not startups, but start dripping money into like the stock market, yeah. right? And when you're doing that. And do you like, because even just investing in the stock market, to break it down simple, is it a Robinhood? Is that what you recommend? I mean, if you're a first-time investor and you've got under $5,000 to invest, I think Robinhood is the perfect place to go. Okay. Right? And once you start getting more and you're about 5000 plus, you want to start working with either a financial consultant or starting to consider more heavier trade platforms where you can start doing a lot more. Yeah. All right? And actually kind of understand how to leverage your money. Right? Because once you're 5000 plus, right, your compound interest really comes into handy. Right? Yeah. Think about this. Like, the city of Manhattan way back in the day, right, was sold for about $180, right? If you take compound interest, that actually would have been like a billion something today. Wow. Right? And so like, and if you did simple interest, it'd only be like $1,000, right? And so, so you, you suggest Robinhood's a good place to start. And then what do you, like, like people is, is an easy thing, just stick with large cap companies that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. play it safe, like Warren Buffett style. Yep. Is that is that kind of the way to start? I think that's a great way to start when you're only putting, putting a limited amount of money, right? Yep. My role essentially is that 75, 25% model again, but when it comes to your risk level, right? You can dial that back as risky as you want to be, right? Always put 75% in some large cap, safer things. And when we're saying large cap, by the way, guys, we're saying like companies that have over, um, have over 25 million, uh, $30 million worth of a capital spend that they're allowed to have, right? Yeah. That's basically that large cap stock. And they're, they're the companies you know, you know, Apple, like Facebook, things like that. Yeah, Facebook, Google, yeah, Google, Microsoft. The companies you know, yeah. right? Um, and so, yes, you want to put some money in there. But, you know, if you want to put some risk and you want to put some socks in, like, you know, like looking at like maybe that next pharmaceutical company you're looking at or something that's a little bit more risky, that can be your risky side. Yeah, and that's how much of your portfolio? That's usually about 25% if you're about a normal risk person. If you're like you, yeah. right, and you got a little bit more like, you yeah. know, bullish about things, yeah. then maybe you dial back to like 60, 40, or maybe even 50, 50. I've seen people do as well. Got it. Right? But you want to protect your, your top side of your money. And that should start the moment you start earning a living, yes. correct? Yes. Yeah. The moment you start earning a living, like uh, let's say, I mean, let's say you're, you're, you're a corporate person, right? You're listening to this right now. You've got a 401k, right? You should start putting money in there first if your company matches. If your company yeah. doesn't match, maybe think about it. But if your company matches, you're giving away free money. Yeah. Literally free money. Literally free my, money. My father did that every year for 30 years. And we pretty much grew up thinking we had no money. Yeah, I hadn't been, I, I just figured we were poor. And then when they ret my father retired, I was like, damn, you have a lot of money. What were we doing all this time? And it's because it's 401 match and he put the max amount of money he yes. could do every year, yeah. which is amazing. Well, and here's the thing. People don't realize that when you put the max amount of money in, you're also creating a tax deduction for yourself. Right. And so people also are like, oh, hey, I don't know if I should give money to my 401k. I want to do all these other things in my life. You're literally paying tax on money that you shouldn't be paying tax on. Yeah. That's a perfect segue. Tax planning. 
Okay. I feel like most young people literally don't even file their taxes, <laughs> let alone properly plan yep. yearly for taxes. Um, in my case, I have like several businesses. It's a very complicated process. Mm -hmm. I have a, literally a full-time CPA in my office mm -hmm. half, half the week <laughs> to make sure that these things happen yep. and, and we're able to do it. And I struggle with that. Like I'm probably his worst client. <laughs> he hates me because I'm not organized <laughs> enough to, to, to handle that yep. situation. What do you recommend for young people for tax planning? Okay, so one, it's super, super easy. If you're starting a company, start a QuickBooks. Really easy to do, costs $5 a month, really not going to be a big expense to you. And it links straight in with certain credit cards that you're using. Yeah. Keep your life simple, stupid. Go ahead and get a separate credit card for your business. Yes. Right? Too many people commingle in the beginning, it makes your life super, super complicated. Yes. Right? So that's, that's one of my quickest things, just to like start on the right track. Then as you're going through it, actively plan. Every time you're bringing income in for your company as an entrepreneur, take about 10, 15 to 18% and put it aside. Right? Depending on how much you think you're going to save up towards the end. But that 15% is basically the bare minimum of taxes you're going to pay at the end of the year. So yeah. it's never a surprise to you. And this is for an entrepreneur and individual. This is uh, an entrepreneur. An individual that maybe is working like a corporate job. Their taxes are getting deducted. Their taxes are getting deducted throughout the whole entire year. But once you're a, you know, a young millennial making a decent amount of money and you're single, you're going to get screwed in taxes. Yeah. Completely screwed in taxes. So my advice for you then is to make sure, one, your 401k is maxed out like we talked about earlier. Yeah. And then as well as basically making sure that you are planning out your taxes for the whole entire year. So maybe sometimes you have to pay your taxes ahead of time. Yeah. Or you overpay your taxes. So you get that refund. You get the refund. Except not now. Not now. <laughs> Except down. not right now. <laughs> Wait maybe a couple more months. But, but there definitely are ways of overpaying your taxes and getting a refund. Okay. Any last, uh, last words? Uh, last words is... Words keep, of wisdom for 2019. What should we be doing? When's the best time to start investing? Same time as when's the best time to plant a tree? Yesterday. So get going. Get going. Thank you. Thank you.